Welcome back to the Pulse. My name's Matt. This is Crypto Heartbeat. Are we going to hug the bear or are we going to shoot the bear? Have you ever heard that expression before? But some people will talk about it as it relates to strategically accomplishing something. Hug the bear, shoot the bear. You know that the bear is dangerous. Is the bear dangerous? So you'd hug a bear and then you'd shoot a bear. We want the bear to be our friend. That's what we're going to talk about today. And as you notice, in the background, we have our uh, moon man rowing through this uh, beautiful background. I feel like I'm in uh, the door of the Explorer. Um, welcome back to The Pulse. My name is Matt. It's an exciting time. As you saw yesterday, we talked about magnitude yesterday, the magnitude of the moment. Of course, the, uh, the Fed increased the interest rates by 75 basis points. Man, I'll tell you what, asleep at the wheel. Man, this is it's nuts. You know, there are cycles to life and everything. Everything, what goes around comes around, they say, right? Let's say hello to the chat and then we'll get into the content. It's a really, really interesting time to be living. We're going to be talking about that today. Ryan Hungate in the house, my first Hexican friend. You guys probably didn't know that. Ryan Hungate. He's my first friend. My first friend in Hex. He was so nice to me. I went into the Hex chat and people were like ripping me to shreds. You know, saying I was fighting. I was just an old crusty guy trying to get some answers. And of course, it took another somewhat old crusty guy to help me out. And that was Ryan Hungate. And he has turned out to be a genius friend. And so thanks for being here, Ryan. I appreciate you more than you know. If you guys see any issues with my internet connectivity, let me know. I'm having some issues as of late. So if you see anything, put it in the chat so I can correct it. Because um, I have a, a feeling I can do that. So what's up, Ryan? Crypto compassion morning, everyone. Is it morning? It's 11, 18 Central Texas time. Do not mess with Texas. Nom Nom is here. What's up? Good morning, all you hexagons. Acrylic art, come on me. Let's hug the bear. That is an option, right? But you got to realize when you get close to bears and you feed bears, what can happen? Godfather J6 in the house. Brothers don't shake hands. Brothers got a hug. <laughs> hey there, fam. Hope all is well. That's right. Brothers don't shake hands. That was an awesome movie. What an awesome. Mr. Yo-Yo is in the house. Good afternoon. Magnus, evening to you. Magnus, thanks for tuning in. Crypto for missions, of course in the eastern part of the world, how do y'all, or how do y'all, Humberto, blessings from sunny Miami, boy, I tell you, Miami, I heard that uh, our friend, um, what's his name, the billionaire George Soros is buying up all of the Latin speaking um, radio stations in Miami, I wonder why, snake eyes, good morning to you, Hex on Air, we only hug. Is that right? We only hug. Hello, everybody. Friends. That's right. Mr. Peach, Mr. Matt, it's hot down here. <laughs> we need a hex pump. You know, we do need a hex pump. And strangely, it was like this kind of relief pump jumped, what, 10 to 17% right after the announcement. And everybody kind of is exhaling. You know, the future, the future, the short term future is not bright, right? We're going into massive recession. Um, and the uncertainty in the world is craziness right now. And so this is an opportunity for us to um, to stick together, right? Do we hug this bear or do we shoot this bear? And we're going to talk about it from a bunch of different angles today. But, you know, we need to we need to, to hug each other, meaning this community is where it's at. And it's amazing to me what Richard has created, right? The very nature of the tokenomics create this... Um, you know, some people, the, the fudders would say, well, you're just stuck in that contract in your long stakes. 
But you know what? It actually, this idea of saving you from yourself, you know, people do buy tops, right? Right? They do buy tops and they do sell bottoms. But at the end of the day, this idea of having yield and then being kind of together, right? It's like being stuck in an elevator, you know? We'd like this elevator to go up. But that's kind of the beauty of this thing is that it really kind of protects you from yourself. Of course, it'd be awesome to have this vertically aligned ecosystem that is a, it's an, an alternative to government control. But Mr. Peach, let's get the pump, cool things down with the pump. David Lee in the house, the man, the celebrity of the chat. Hello, all. Big hugs from southwestern Indiana. David Lee's hugging the bear, if you know what I'm saying. Welcome back. Traveled seven and a half hours to be with me at my dad's funeral. Amazing hexagon, amazing friend. If you see any issues with my internet connectivity, please let me know if you see anything. Because I'm, I'm looking at the, you know, the bars that it shows over there in StreamYard, and it's like not very happy. Crypto Gammy, happy Thursday. Yeah, it is Thursday, isn't it? Nom nom. Good morning, Matt. Good morning to you. MT Coiner, what's up? What's up? Morning family, MJ Money, MJ Money, El Deuce, I haven't seen El Deuce in the chat. Thanks for live streaming. Hey, thanks for being here and watching this stuff. I really appreciate you. Um, Umberto says, pretty quiet right now. Any any guesstimate on Pulse Chain Launch? I'm here calm and waiting for the transfer of wealth. That's a really tough one. And it, it, it challenges me too because we've got, you know, we're working on a project, but it's with a very large community. And we have timelines in that community, and we had had the assumption that Pulse Chain was going to launch prior to now, mid-May. Super excited, ready to go, you know, working with our our group, and you know, we we're actually looking at those timelines, going, you know what I mean? The Pulse Chain is really important, but also uh, getting, uh, you know, making sure we're meeting the timelines of our um, of our partners is also key. So. You know, listening to Richard the other day on the stream and hearing what they're doing, refactoring that. Okay, so from mid-May, let's say six, eight weeks, there's going to be a test net three, probably a new snapshot. We've got the SAC balances updated. And then, and then I think it's a little bit of waiting around. It sounds like the Hot Six movies wrapped up. Um, Richard's taking victory lap after victory lap, getting people to do. I loved it. He, he put out something. He's like, hey, guys, can you guys get all of these videos where I basically crush everyone and let's put them together and do a compilation? And somebody replies to him in all caps. It says, I don't work for you. I, I got a kick out of that. That's great. Um, was it? Nom nom. Uh, Nakita Mohan. I, I probably butchered that one. Welcome, Pulse X fam. Um, good to see you. Chris with a heartbeat, kind of robotic. Lol. That's right. 75 bases. Sir Rags called it. Rags, don't give him any credit. Call anything. He's just reading the news. Yeah, but you know what? Oh, we'll give him a little. We'll throw him a bone. Anders, what's up? Hello from Europe, Mr. Yo-Yo. Hello, 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 Magnus. Oh, we are lagging. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to change my internet connectivity. If it knocks us off, I will re go live, but I'm going to, I'm going to mess with it here. So hang on one second. Let's see what happens. Oh, let's see what happens. This could be dangerous. All right. It's still not giving me the love. Let's see what happens here. Might have to reset the router if you know what I mean, but thank you. We're patiently waiting. That's right. Hug the hug the bear. Motley Investor in the house. Thanks for being here. I appreciate you. The hexistentialist. Your bandwidth is up because of the moving background. With a static background, you use less. That's right. Because it's got to change all those pixels, right? That is very true. That is very, very true. Look at you. Shmada. Um... Okay, robotic every now and then for the stream. All right, tell me if that gets better because I've shifted it over to the wired connection. I made the mistake of having the wireless on to connect to a printer. All right, uh, RG3 in the house, man. It was awesome having you in the stream yesterday in that early morning stream. It was so cool. Filmed the last scene this morning of the highest of stakes movie. That's the assumption that I'm making. And of course, the pirate himself, the captain, the captain, 
is uh, featured in that film, which is so cool. And I know that you and Kinetics are, are producers, I believe executive producers of that. That's so exciting. And you think about this as a legacy project, you know, how often do you get a chance to do something like that? Tell an important story. And to me, this is a really important story. It's not just about Richard. It's just really the story of a time in history. And to me, it's, it's historic. And I think it's really, really cool that you guys are willing to invest in that and make that commitment. So RG3, Kinetics, anyone who's been involved in the film, fantastic. Thank you so much for doing what you're doing. I think that's going to be a watershed moment. And think about when this is going to happen. You know, it's going to happen, obviously, in the bear. But we're going to hit this bottom at some point in time. I just hope there's nothing in the world that just literally... Remember when 9-11 happened? Remember when 9-11 happened and everything was on pause, right? Like literally, absolutely everything got paused. And it was like anything that was important or you were excited about was like over because all focus was on something else. And this feels like a similar time that there are these straws that break the camel's back. And that's the only thing I'm worried about as it relates to all this. I want this to be this huge splash. I want people to see it. I want it to be on Netflix. I want it to be the most popular thing. And people are like, I want to see, you got to see this dumpster fire. And then they go, oh, hold on a second. Because everything Richard talks about in this High to Stakes film is really going to be so relevant right now. You got Luna Crash, you got Celsius, you got all this stuff. And what is this consistent message been? And that's where the contrast is. And I think that that's where the drama is, is you're going to see, hold on a second, there is somebody out there that knows what's really going on. It's the, the Oracle of Crypto, Richard Hart. Arr. RG3, thanks for being here. Baby Turtle Love Jesus, hello. Hex Toshi's in the house, smash the like. CP, greetings from Denmark. Umberto Rags for president. You know, that's the last thing we need. You know what we need Rags as? We need Rags like the, the head of the CIA. That's what that, that guy is, man. He is. He goes deep, if you know what I'm saying. Um, ah, good old live technical difficulties. Don't you love it? Don't you love it? Hex Live, good to see him. Get him. Um, Mm-hmm. Oh, really? Nice. I assume that's Jim Rat Crypto Raid. What's up? Thanks for sending everybody over here. I appreciate that. Uh, Jim Rat Crypto. I always get it wrong. Is it Jim Rat Crypto or Crypto Jim Rat? I think he accepts both, but I think it is Jim Rat Crypto. Crypto Pez. Hey. Um, Crypto Heartbeat. Hodling strong here in Spain. Might get to see you U.S. Hexicans next year if I get a chance to come over. It would be great. You know, um, I'm really hoping that Pulse Chain launches so that we can actually be together in Vegas. I mean, I'll likely go anyway, even if Pulse Chain, it, you know, go to PulseCon just because I want to see friends, right? I just want to hang out. I don't know if you guys caught it yesterday, but Big K threw out the first pitch in Wrigley Field at the Cubs game. That was really cool. And he, I think he threw it in hopes that he would be on Sports Center. Um, it was great. It's so good to see Big K out there. And I guess he bought an NFT that one of the benefits of the NFT was that he'd get to throw out the first pitch, which is fantastic. And all these amazing hexagons got together. Um, got to see Black Hexagon did a little stream there if you didn't catch it. You know, and you had coffee and Valley of Bran and um, Nardo. And let's see who else was there that I can remember. Uh, Cabana Crypto. And it was cool. It was cool seeing all those folks in Chicago getting together. And, and the fact that people would travel, like, um, oh, Maddie was there. Um, amazing. People just traveling around the country to get together as Hexicans, have a have a drink, have a good time, have a laugh, watch a watch game. Um, it's pretty cool. Very, very cool. Um, AJ, Rip City Hex. What's up, Maddie? Made it. What's up, my Hexican peeps? Hope all is well. AJ, Rip City Hex. Hold on a second. You're back. You made it through. Dude, what's up? My understanding had some health issues and you're back in action. So thankful for that. Glad you're back. A lot of concerned folks, especially in the Rags to Riches community. Even though Rags wouldn't admit it, he's concerned about you. Bob the guy, so far, just a rate of one. <laughs> That's fine. We'll accept it all. Magnus, much better. Okay, cool. Yeah, we're back on wired internet. Um, seems much better, Matt. Thank you so much. Seems less glitchy. We don't want glitchy. S7, welcome back. It's great now. Thanks for being here. Bob, the guy. Well, all right, here we go. The existentialist. Um, woking. Sweet now on weird connection. Okay. All right. Thanks for the support, you guys. Yeah, you know, 
Um, it's so cool. That's to me the, the greatest part of the Hexagon community. When when David Lee came, you know, I said to him, "Dude, you don't need to come." And he's like, "No, I'm coming." And I was like, "No, it's okay, dude." You know, and of course, you you know, you're stressed out when a, a parent dies and you got all these things to do. And I had to do all of the arrangements for the funeral and everything. And he's like, "I'm coming." And it was just such a relief to have someone there, you know, and to to have a friend there. And he's such a good dude. But it's that kind of stuff when you're there for people. Um, you know, I think about what Rags did for the Christmas story, helping out Mike and his daughter and just rallying the, the, just rallying the troops and the resources to help. To me, that's what it's all about. It just makes a richness of the community because it's, you know, it's way more. You think about any, anything you've ever invested in in the past, right? Like when you invest in real estate, it doesn't come with a bunch of friends. It doesn't come with people that support you at a funeral. Godfather J6, Elliot's here. Um, I <laughs> uh, love you guys. You know who you are. AJ Rip City X. That's so fantastic. Get well, man. RG3 says, David Lee giving you the love. Torin. Yes, yes, yes. Hello, baby. <laughs> baby turtle. Um, it was awesome. Love the streams. Fantastic. This is great to see you. RG3. I'm just glad that you actually have some time. We need to get together. Because we wanted to do a little bit of interview. The question is, are you in your studio right now? And could you join right now? And we could have a nice little chatty chat. That would be cool. An extemporaneous chatting with the captain. That would be really cool. So if you're available, let's do it. Oh, I understand. Um, hexagons are everywhere. It's so cool to see. <laughs> so great. I was, I was in Vegas prior to the event. And I was playing poker at a table. And this dude across the table was, uh, he was a Bitcoin guy. And we, I mean, it was like connecting about, he's like, yeah, yeah, is that that Richard Hart project? I was like, yeah. He's like, yeah, I got a little bit of hex. And we had this great conversation. It's like amazing connections with people, um, especially the hexagons. Uh, all right, let's see what we got here. Dude, I know. Oh, thanks, man. Triple bypass on the men. You know, that's amazing. My dad had two heart attacks. He just had stents put in. But when you have like a bypass surgery and all that, that's the cool thing about the heart though. When they reroute that stuff, you feel way better, right? My dad said that when he had his issues, it was like the elephant was sitting on his chest. And, you know, you go through the bypass stuff and of course, you know, you can get through it. I mean, you can be back to normal, man. I'm glad. I'm so glad that you're okay because that's dangerous stuff. 92 people here. Welcome back to The Pulse. My name is Matt. And we're like literally on a boat, rowing on a boat. Um, we're talking about bear market. We're also talking about whether we hug the bear or shoot the bear. I'm going to jump into that content here. Sandy, what's up? Salty Hex and up into the right is here. Man, you guys are just pouring in. Elliot, what's up? Almost 9,000 subs. Crypto Harvey, keep it up. We hit 8,000 on Twitter yesterday. So thank you guys for following on Twitter. I think I upped my meme game and it just started adding way more growth on, on Twitter than on um on YouTube, but I haven't really been, you know, doing the right stuff. You know, there's all these things you're supposed to do with tags and all that. And I'm just like, eh, not super interested in that. Um, cause my primary goal isn't to grow a channel. My primary goal is to contribute to the community. Richard Cranium's here afternoon. Crypto RB. What's up? Vets and crypto. Good morning, fellow hexagons. Morning vets. That's right. Uh, Joey, amazing insight. Uh, that's a crypto. Good to see you. Matt and the captain. Wouldn't that be cool? That would be so awesome. I have to look and see if he even responded. Um, do, do, do. Pulse forms here. And here we go. We'll get through this. Okay. Right. I say we hug the bird, then shoot the bird. There we go. That is it. Empty corner wins the prize for the content section of this live stream. So I don't know if you've heard this before, but Let's say you're in a competitive environment. And I mean this more like business, right? You're in a, you're in this like, um, you're in the scenario where you want to get ahead, right? You're competing. It's not war. You're not shooting people. No one's dying. It's business. And you've got competitors and you want to know what's going on. You know, there's a lot of people would suggest, and you see this politically a lot too, is this idea that you would cozy up to the bear, right? And you make friends with the bear, right? Well, we know bears in, in some respects, we have to have a, a certain amount of caution with them, right? They're not all teddy bears, if you know what I'm saying. 
And so here we are in this bear market. This idea of hugging the bear and shooting the bear is as you get close to it, you can shoot it, right? Because you're hugging it, right? You've made friends with it and then you shoot it. Now, I don't mean that in a in the in the negative sort of way, but I look at the bear market and you know, what has the US done, especially the the West? They've continued to feed the bears, right? And that's the people, right? Stimulus, printing money. It just it just continues to feed the bear. And what happens is if you've ever had the situation where you're the one that's providing, you know, I've I've run businesses and had upwards of 200 employees and payroll. I mean, if you hire people, they will keep eating your money. Right. You know, and they'll act like they're working, too. It's crazy. Like, oh, yeah, I'm super busy. And, you know, what's really interesting is after the 08 crash hit, I had to pare back the business significantly. It was really hard to drop um, friends. You know, I had a lot of people I worked with that were friends. And what's um, amazing about it is that it uh, we, we were able to accomplish the same amount of work. It's crazy. Actually, our bottom line increased. So what's, what happens is in so many situations, the bears, meaning the people that you feed, and this happens, I think it's, it's really happened because of the, um, um, you know, it's really the New Deal. I mean, if you really think about American history, the New Deal changed this into this real public phase where people were basically this social safety net. The government's going to take care of you versus your community and people around you. And, you know, you you work together with others versus, you know, the government's just going to take care of you. And once you're on kind of that um, public support, you know, and we've done that for so long that you get this uh, dependency, right? And of course, with, with the pandemic and everything and with stimulus, you know, and of course, you know, you think over time there's been issues of, you know, I make more money by being unemployed than actually working. I mean, that happened for a period during the pandemic. But you feed these bears and what do they keep doing? They keep coming back, they want more, right? And more and more and more and more and more and more until what ends up happening is these bears end up eating you. So that's one side of it, right? Feeding the bears, you know, this idea of uh, being in a tough circumstance and going, right, well, am I going to make the most of a difficult situation? And is a bear market a difficult situation? Well, it's a matter of perspective. What is your perspective? This is the time. I mentioned the last couple of streams about Ross Perot in 87 when the when the uh, real estate market crashed. He bought out all of North Texas. You know, that's the thing that's really interesting is these bear market times, the people that are really successful investors take advantage of these things. And they realize this is the key. Getting in, buying low, selling high. You've heard that before? Yeah. And everybody thinks you're a genius in retrospect, right? But you're like, no, I just know I've lived long enough to realize that there are cycles. Yeah, I've missed several cycles and I'm not missing this one. And that's the thing about getting older. You realize you start recognizing them. When you're young, you're like, it's the first time it ever happened to me. And now you're like, well, this is the third time I've seen. And so how do you take advantage of this? And how do you find yourself in a scenario in which you do hug the bear? You're like, thank you. There's a bear market. Because you don't know where you are in the bull. The bull run, right? It could end at any time. You know, and being in the middle of the run isn't always the best either because you don't know how far it's going to run. But boy, when you know things are crashing, a bottom is coming. And that's why you hug the bear. You go, thank you, bear. It's like a teddy bear, right? You got to be able to, to survive, certainly. But this is the opportunity. And, and here's the thing that's important. I think a lot of people that don't understand technology, so many people that don't know what's happening, they don't know about crypto. But it's not like crypto is like not going to continue. And I think that that's the big thing. You know, in the past, you know, people were fearful, like, well, this this Bitcoin thing is an experimentation, right? It's an experiment. Well, we're, we're past that. We're way past that phase, right? We're to the point where people are, you know, integrating it into, you know, the grayscale, you look at um, what the Mountain Crypto Advisors guys are doing, when you look at trusts, and then you look at people putting into their 401ks, I mean, this is going to become mainstream. So this next big run, like if you look at the BTC chart, and you look at the initial pump, right, the really, the first public pump, which went to 20,000, then it dropped to around three, right, chopped sideways for a while. And then you look just, just very, very cursely, back out and look at the magnitude of the first versus the second wave. Right. First wave was to 20,000. The second one was to 70,000, right? 69 and change. Now imagine this. It drops down to 11K. That's, you know, what Richard thinks is the bottom. Well, let's say it drops to 20, right? Which are, you know, re really close to. I think it's going to end up going a lot lower, but let's just say, let's say 20. 
the volume of the next run with all the new people, I mean, the magnitude continues to increase because this is not a mature market yet. We're still early adopters. This is complicated. Remember before there were domain names? I literally remember typing in um, IP addresses before domain names. There were no domain names, right? And you think about back in the billboard days of actually dialing into a billboard, right? The VAX system back when I was in college. And so when you think about technology, it becomes easier, right? It, now, the problem is in this process of getting easier and more convenient, you give away your sovereignty. And that's what Richard Hart is doing. And I want you to see how big of a deal this is. If you stick to your guns and you, you ensure that not your keys, not your coins, all the people that are going to come in the future that need help, right? Think about like a Grayscale or think about even Mountain Crypto Advisors. There are people, I've met people, they're in their 70s, they sold a, a massive oil and gas business. And the people that control the money are not going to get a MetaMask wallet. They are just not. They are used to paying for help. You got to find people that you support, but this is a necessary part of getting people into crypto. And that's why they exist is because there's people like, what? MetaMask? What? No, I don't have time for that stuff. You know, I'm going to the country club playing golf. You do it for me. Figure it out. There's a lot of money that's like that. And you got to have people that can be trusted and helpful to help you get that stuff into crypto. That's coming. That's a part of what this next big, you know, huge bull run is going to be. It's it literally, it's going to pour into that. And what's going to happen is all the people on the other side, and this is what I consider to be the CBDCs and the governments and everything that are going to digital currency. They want to win too, right? So there's this battle between good and evil, in my opinion. There's this central bank digital currencies that want to track you and you know all the conveniences of having, oh, our digital currency, and you can't have that cash. That cash is dirty. It has viruses on it, right? Get away with cash. And then you know what that leads to as far as globalization is, it's easy to tax. Yep, we're changing the rules on you with these wallets, these government wallets you have. And you know what? Everyone's going to have the opportunity. At first, you, you can give to global warming, right? Contribute a little bit to global warming. And then the next thing you know, they're going to be like, well, we're going to tax everyone's government wallets. And it's going to be a small amount. Hey, everyone has to contribute to this because, you know, you guys are breathing too much. And we need to get the carbon dioxide out. And, you know, global tax comes. And this is like slippery slope, right? Well, the Richard Hart ecosystem, if it gets built and it's vertically aligned, it's an alternative to that baloney. That's what's really going on, folks. So this next phase, why should you hug the bear? Hug this cute little teddy bear? Because this is where the opportunity is. But you have to understand, don't sell your soul, right, to gain the entire world. Do not sell your soul to gain the entire world, folks. Hug the bear. Don't shoot the bear. The bear is your friend. The bear is an indicator of the opportunity in the future that is bullish robo crypto heartbeat stream yeah it's like max headroom remember those days all on texas internet <laughs> glitching sorry guys i apologize for that 144p call me that um that's it i had to be there for my mother she was admitted a week ago for some pain issues we have her back and she's feeling much better now awesome s7 thanks for sharing that dude glad that she's doing better um it's hard with this quality, though. Is it still that way? I'm not getting a warning on my side. I apologize. This i got to figure this out. I think i got to reset the router. Hey, George, tell me about the rabbits, George. Oh, my gosh. Harvey. What a reference, man. Bob, the guy with the reference to Harvey. It's amazing. Or no, no, George, tell me about the rabbit. No, 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 no. That's of mice and men. I apologize, Bob. What an idiot. I, I will hug them, and I would love them, and I'll call them George. Okay, I, I messed that one up. I was thinking about Harvey, the invisible rabbit. But you're talking about of mice and men. Hey, George, I'll rub them and I'll, I'll hug them and I'll call them George. Um, uh, kapow. Bang, bang. That's right. All right. Bang, bang. Shoot that bear. All right. Let's see what we got. You guys are all up in, all up in the stream. Sell your soul, not your soul. There you go. <laughs> Aaron, thanks so much for that. I appreciate it. We can still understand you. Um, they just spoiled. Yeah, they are spoiled. Yeah, they're used to the, the five the five K streams of mice and men. That's right. Of mice and men. Wow, Harvey, I haven't seen that in a little bit. Remember that one? Harvey. Yeah, great movie. Boy, it just shows you how old we are. 
right? These kids are like, what are you talking about, old man? I'm like, you kids get off my lawn. Oh my goodness, it's crazy. Well, one of the things I was hoping to have at this time is a guest. I was hoping to have a guest in um, that could really illustrate the nature of what it means to be in the bear market, you know, and there's certain people that have expertise in this area. Um, and so I'm just going to have to, I'm going to have to bear with, bear with, uh, you're going to have to bear with me when it comes to this. So there's a big reminder. I, I, I talk about our project that we're doing and what we're up to and how our goal is to tokenize large communities and bring them into the pulse chain. And, you know, when you look at how, what is the, the Richard Hart ecosystem look like right now. So it's hex holders, it's people who sacrificed for Pulse, and it's people who sacrificed for Pulse X. How big is that? I'm going to be very generous and say that's, I'm going to say that's 300,000 people. I don't know that it's actually that large because of the number of wallets, but I'm going to be really generous and say 300,000 people. You know, what is there, 8 billion people on the planet? 8 point something? I don't know, close to 8 billion? That's a lot of people. 300,000 is nothing. There's 330 million people just in the United States alone. You think about number of households and who doesn't know about crypto, right? I believe that the future is about taking existing communities that have causes and concerns and tokenizing them, helping them unlock generosity within their organization and within their community. Right. Think about what has happened in this first phase. What Richard Hart brilliantly did is he built a community. How did he build that community? He spent time giving, giving value, right? Remember that top hat Richard, right? Talking about how to be a better friend, how to apologize. Remember that? That's value. Give, 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 right? And he built a community of people that realized, hey, this guy cares about me, cares about people not getting wrecked, and cares about building something that's better and sees the 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 problems with Bitcoin and I mean, he had a fluid dynamics coin, right? He had ideas. He's like Bitcoin hex. If you go back to those Bitcoin hex days, he's got this um, this talk on on a, at a conference. It's genius, right? Why and how do we build a better Bitcoin? Well, building community, it's so difficult to do, right? How many nerds do you know that have a contract, right? Oh, I got a coin. Yeah, you can be a nerd with a contract. You got nothing. But then it's people like RG3 and it's people like Hexo. It's people that have built in coffee, the people that built a community when it was the toughest time to do it. Now it's like everybody's like, hey, I'm going to be a streamer. Right. It's easy because there's all kinds of people in the audience. But when you're building, it's like, you know, it's like pushing stuff uphill. And so here we are. Well, there are so many different groups of people who have a bond. And, and you know, you think about this, that have a cause that are galvanized around something. And so, you know, this came, this initial building of value, which Richard did incredibly well and got very, very, very fortunate, is building it, saying, look at this technology, look at this tech, look at this better Bitcoin, making a case to you and to invest. And what's the benefit to you? You might get rich. Hey, it's working, right? It worked. Everybody's like, yeah, that, that, it worked for me. You got my number. I'm interested in the mad gains. The big bags. I got diamond hands, right? Well, what's the future look like? Well, the future looks like people that are um, having to, um, well, they're already connected, right? They're, these are people that are already connected in community, but they don't have the resources. And if you think about it, what is, where does the value come from? It comes from agreement. And if a group of a very large group of people can understand that, hold on, we have power by working together, right? In our own agreement, we already have commonality because it's so difficult, right, to point at tech and say, hey, follow this tech and follow this me and buy this thing, right? Promotion, hex promotion. What if you started with a community of a half a million or five million? Think about what that would do for the Pulse Chain. Think about how much volume that would add. And instead of going after one individual, which I continue to do in the community, it's talk to people about what's going on. And people are always curious, hey, what do you do? And I talk to them about crypto. But this next phase is where it's not just one onesie twosies. It's big, big, big audiences. Why? Think about the opportunity. I think about these uh, OG hexagons who have literally live in the dream. And I would ask you this question. If you're someone that's seen tremendous gains in crypto, do you wish that upon other people? Or do you like, no, I'm the only one that wins. 
No, of course not. In the Mexican community, you care about everybody winning. I want everybody to win. So why wouldn't you want other people to win? Because here's the cool thing. If you're sitting on Pulse and Pulse X, guess what happens when a ton more volume comes on the Pulse chain? Tokenizing community is the future. And if you realize this, what we have is so special because it's so difficult to create. Right? Everybody thinks it's easy. It is not easy. Richard Hart has an amazing set of skills because you not only have to be good at marketing and understanding it, you have to be able to communicate and be smart, but you also have to understand tech. Very, very, very rare to be that kind of innovator. And then on top of it, not just being able to communicate, actually being able to innovate within the blockchain technology. This is a rare thing and it's special. I think a lot of people get it, but we need this thing to be a hundred X number of people. And that's what I'm working on. And that's what Brandon from rags to riches is helping uh, our team do, right? He's the, he's the muscle, if you know what I'm saying. He's a big, big part of how we, how we're doing this. And to me, you know, how do we all contribute, right? This is incredible because my background is in the nonprofit space. I've worked with um, large and small nonprofits for the last 20 years. And I've come across some amazing communities of people who are extremely passionate, who have very little resource. And then I look at what happened with hexagons and I look at this and I go, hold on a second. Who doesn't want to win together? Who doesn't want to unlock generosity? Who doesn't want to be freed from debt slavery? Who doesn't want to stand up to authoritarianism? Who doesn't want to be empowered? Who doesn't want to be stronger? Who doesn't want to secure their future? Who doesn't want to declare their independence from this damn system? You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. Thanks for being here. I appreciate you guys. Crypto graphics, what's up? Keep killing it, Matt. Love the consistent streams. Yep. You know what? Just keep on doing it. Just keep on doing it, right? One shop a day. What do they say? 1% better? I'm just taking the hatchet and hitting the tree one time every day, right? Think about it. I'm like, what, how, what, what swipe are we going to take today? And one day the tree will fall, right? Consistent. Constantly bring value to others. Help other people win. You want to win? Help other people win, period. That's the essence of this whole thing. It's the absolute most important underlying thing. Trust and winning, encouraging people, lifting people up, being a part of it, helping them win, right? I think so many people in this world want to beat you down. How many people do you know in your life that uh, are a drain on you versus those who make you feel like, wow, you can do anything? It's very, 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 very rare that there are people in your life who breathe life into you. Are you that kind of person? Are you the kind of person that people just love being around? Are you the kind of person that, that somebody actually listens to you? Are you the kind of person that listens to other people? One of the greatest gifts you can give to someone is actually listening and go, hey, so is this what you're saying? Oh, not, not, not fixing stuff for them. No, being a good friend. It's really rare. I think mature people had a grandfather who, you know, real soft hands, right? He hadn't worked in years. He'd pull you in and be like, hey, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? He was interested, right? And one of the principles is this, be interested, not interesting. Be interested, not interesting. You know what? There's something so annoying. You go to a party or something, you know that guy? He's like, hey, let me tell you a little bit more about me, right? Right, braggadocious, right? Somebody's just talking all the time, not listening, right? Not interested. You know, it just wears you out, I, you know, and, and that's what I see a lot of times is people are not mature, but they're also not considerate of others. And you know what a lot of that is, is they're trying to basically make you think they're someone that they're not. And so they, they put on, uh, they try to play a role, right? They're like dancing monkeys. And I sit back and I see through all that stuff. But you know, what's really interesting is if you can find even one friend, right? You don't need a whole bunch of them. But that's what I think is really interesting about hexagons is that, you know, when you're winning together, you're really interested in other people. And you're like, hey, how can I help you? And how can I be a part of this? Nobody wants to be around that idiot who's talking all the time, right? That loud talker, you know what I'm saying? Gets a couple of beers in him and he won't shut up. You know what I'm talking about. And if it's you, stop doing it, right? Be interested in people. Help them win. Breathe life into them. That's the key. That's the key to this whole thing winning. Are you somebody who encourages people? Are you somebody that wears people out? 
you don't have to be an optimist. You can be a realist, but you also have to understand and consider others in addition to yourself. So many selfishness is really the key. Consider others in addition to yourselves. That's what makes value on the blockchain. That's what makes value in life. You want to win friends and influence people? Listen to them. Say back to them what you hear them saying. Encourage them. Be actually interested. So many people are focused, navel-gazing, right? You want to transform things? You want to you be a leader? Listen. Serve. Right? Everybody gets this impression that I'm the boss. I'll tell you what to do. Nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care. No one cares how much you know until they know how much you care. That idiot that's talking all the time at that party and yelling over everybody, no one cares about that guy. He's an idiot, an absolute idiot. And people just write him off. But it's that person that's like, yeah, really interested in what you're doing and making connections and introducing you to people and being, being genuine. I, I just get sick and tired of it. And it's just, you know, what's so interesting is people, you can read people so easily when you know these things because you realize, all right, yeah, that guy is as insecure as the day is long because he will not shut up, right? He wants me to see all these things, right? And that's what's interesting. I think what Richard Hart is doing, he's, he's flexing all these things because those idiots that are out there, the dumb money, are the ones that see that stuff and are like, oh, right? Moth to flame, right? Bring them in. Come on, we'll take it all. Your money's green. Let's go. But I think that when you when you really think about where the value is, it's really this fabric of a guy like David Lee traveling all the way from southeastern Indiana to come to my dad's funeral. That's service, right? That's genuine love and concern and care for other people. That's at the bottom line of all this stuff. And if you can find a community of people like that that care for one another and care for a cause. There's nothing that can stop them. And you're seeing it firsthand because you're a hexagon. Hexagon isn't about hex. Hexagon has become something. It's a thing of its own. It's a living organism. We have commonality, right? There's this contract. But we're realizing something greater in the process. Are you contributing to it? Are you adding value to it? Are you crediting its account or are you debiting its account? Add value, bring value, breathe life. That's all I got to say. People are starting to see Richard Hart in a different light, not specifically tagging him in tweets, but we can read between the lines. I don't need a drug test people to know they're on drugs. <laughs> wow. A slight edge. We're the one percenters. We are hexagons. Hex is great. The more the merrier. Happy pineapple. That's right. How to win friends and influence people says exactly what you're saying. Preach it, brother. Dale Carnegie. If you think back into you know self-help, by the way, the first self-help book in this world, and not really self-help, is uh, is the Bible, right? And then you think about all these people. That have, um, there's a book called Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. That's kind of, to me, one of the quintessentials, right? That's one of the core foundational ones. If you haven't read Think, Think and Grow Rich, I, I listen to it. I like listening to it on audiobook. Uh, it's in the public domain. If you have not read that book, do yourself a favor. Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Yeah. Yeah, it'll change your life. Um, these are my greatest fears. Being that guy you're talking about, ingenuine and narrow-minded. Yeah, you're not that person because you're actually typing this and because you actually have awareness and a fear of that. The people that are like that aren't here, right? Those people aren't listening to wisdom. Those people are, yeah, it's debauchery, you know? And so that's the thing. Who are you? Who are you planning on being? And I think a lot of people I, I see out there are looking at success, right? And I think they think that, well, you know, money is a great scorecard, right? It's a great scorecard. It's like, well, look at my bank account. You know, what good is a bank account with bad relationships, right? I went to Austin and a guy came up to me and he said, hey, man, I love your stuff. He goes, yeah, like I got more money than I know what to do with. And you could just tell in his face he was so lonely. All he wanted to connect with people. And the greatest thing about Hex was that he could connect with people and, and be welcomed into the community. You know, I know so many people that are wealthy and miserable. So there's a dynamic here that's way more than money, right? Pardon me. Way more than money. You know, it's, um, 
It's really cool. You know, a lot of the things that are true that are wisdom are counterintuitive, right? Counterintuitive. Real wisdom. Serving other people. You want to be great? Be a servant. If you want to be great, serve other people. Help them get what they want. Because you know what? When you go out of your way to serve people, I was looking at trending uh, on, on Twitter today. And uh, Chewy, you know that company that does the dog stuff, dog and cat, animal food, Chewy.com? I was like, why is Chewy trending? And the reason Chewy was trending was because a woman had a full bag of dog food and called Chewy.com called their phone number and said, Hey, my dog just died. I'd like to, can I return this my dog food? I haven't opened it up. They not only returned the dog food, gave a full refund, but then sent flowers to the house with the person that was on the phone's signature with condolences for the dog. And now it's trending on Twitter. You know, and you don't just be nice because you're going to get something. You're just genuinely nice and caring and thoughtful. And when you do that, it comes back to you in spades, right? It comes back to you. It is, um, it's amazing, right? And you know, and then of course you have friendships of people, and you realize that well, it's way more about who you know than what you know. And when people know how much you care, oh man, love covers a multitude of sins. They say. AJ Rip City Hex says, start with why. So this is the golden circle, from Simon Sinek. Simon Sinek says, people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. 100%. Your ethos, the purpose, right? People are buying why you do something, not what you do. And if you think about this as it relates to like, let's talk about Rolex, right? Somebody said to the CEO, and this is just one of those advertising axioms, you know, said to the CEO of Rolex, he goes, what, you know, do you sell watches? And he said, no, we don't sell watches. He's like, what? You're Rolex. Of course you sell watches. He goes, no, 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 no. We sell luxury. Well, what is luxury? It's a benefit, right? What is, you don't sell timepieces. Absolutely not, right? If you need a watch, you got it on your phone. You don't need something on your wrist. What are you selling? Luxury. What is luxury? What is the benefit of luxury? Look at me. Look, I must have done something right because look at all my diamonds. Look at my really expensive watch. That's unnecessary to tell the time. So people buy why, not what you do. And so people understanding how much you care about that thing. Look at, look at, um, what's his name? Uh, Steve Jobs, right? You know, whether you love him or hate him, Steve Jobs cared about the design of things. He cared about what things looked on the inside. He cared about font choices. He cared about, I mean, look at Johnny Ive. It was important to Steve Jobs to have a Johnny Ive that could do designs that were beautiful. You could tell that there was care in that. Have you ever gone to a restaurant, a local restaurant in your area where the owner is actually making the food? You know, like think of IHOP, right? IHOP, the Inter International House of Pancakes, right? The worst food on the planet Earth. Why? Because the owner's not there. You go to some place that's a local food place and that, you know, the owner comes out to you and, or it's like, let's say it's a husband and a wife and they work at this place and they're always there and they greet you and they come in and, you know, they, you know, where would you like to be? They know your name. And then you know that they're crafting the love and intent and the why they do what they do comes through in the food. How? Well, care, crafting, all that kind of stuff. That's the same thing. That's why this community is so powerful because it has the essence of ownership in it. You bring something to it. You add to the story. The why is defined by you. Why do you think I do what I do? Because I'm not hearing the why I want to hear every day. So I, I tell the why that I want to hear. And what is that? Genuine, honest, caring, loving people, caring for each other, and winning and making money at the same time. It's like a beautiful thing because I, I know what it's capable of because I've seen what it can produce. And then I want to like, you know, export that to the world, right? I want everyone to be able to understand that this new financial world is about more than just money. It could free the captives from this system that is absolutely broken and backwards, but you can also benefit from it because it deepens relationships. This is why Raul Paul, Raul Pal said that we're building digital countries. 
because it's the same thing, right? It's a community of people who have leadership and rules and an understanding and a why and symbols and all that kind of stuff and a currency. And that's what we're seeing. Digital countries are being created and they're being created and spoken into existence. You realize that? What is fiat? It is by decree. What is a decree? But something that is spoken into existence. It's not tied to any value. So what are we doing here in New Hexaco? We're speaking value into existence by agreeing together. You know, when you think about an automated market maker, what does an automated market maker do? Straight supply and demand, right? More buyers, price goes up. More sellers, price goes down. And why does it exist? Because not everybody sells at the same time. This isn't rocket science. But the fabric of the community and then the tokenomics of locking up creates stability. That's why I'm not worried about that. That's why you need to hug this bear, folks. Hug this bear. It's a teddy bear. It's going to treat you well, right? Put your, put your thumb in your mouth and go to sleep. Wake up until the bull's about to run. and <laughs> You can run with the bulls in Pamplona, Spain, right? Amazing. Tank crypto. Wow. What's up? I wish Pulse launched earlier. ETH fees have dropped. Yeah, you know, that's the other thing is when is the right time? We need it to launch. And I'm in this really big conundrum with our project because the community that we're talking about, which is about a half a million people, want things to launch. But we don't have the Pulse chain, right? It's hard, right? It's gotta, we're, we're, these are tough decisions we got to make. And so the big question is, is it going to launch when it's ready or is it going to launch? Because it's never really ready, right? You always have something on the on the, um, on the the list, if you will, on the, on the roadmap. Certainly, you don't want to get in here where you think, well, it's sitting at 21,000 on BTC and it's going to be 11. Yeah, it'd be nice for it to drop and us to get closer to 11 before it goes because you don't want to languish, right? But I, I, I got this feeling that launching in the Pulse Chain with the system state, why, because it's such a big idea and so much is so depressed that it's going to be the conversation across the world and could make the bottom. But it's hard for me to imagine it making the bottom while we still have a war in Ukraine and potentially the Chinese doing something crazy. But could you imagine how big of a deal that is? And you think about Richard is in it for the glory. Could you imagine if he's the guy that literally sets the captives free and launches and makes the bottom. The guy calls the top and makes the bottom. Woo! We think victory laps now. Just wait. Just wait. Thank you so much for the stream, Matt. Thank you for being here, Torn. Adrian, what's up? Easy money. Steve Jobs never cared about donating money to medical research and actually died of cancer. That's exactly right. He cared about his product, right? You know, one of the things that Steve Jobs said, a lot of people criticize him for not being a philanthropist, right? They see Bill Gates and they're like, yeah, you made all this money. You should give it back. You know what Steve Jobs said? He goes, do you think the products that we built have helped people? Yeah. Yeah. He's, he made a tremendous contribution. How many people, I mean, one including, that used the Apple products to make money? Yeah. I mean, it brought me a ton of value if you use the tools, right? Right. He called it the bicycle of the mind. But yeah, he was not a philanthropic person. Honestly, I don't think he was a much caring person. I think he was actually a jerk. But it took somebody like that to insist upon things. Remember back before, um, you know, uh, Steve Jobs had left Apple, right? And this goofy guy from Pepsi came in and took it over. And next thing you know, there was, um, it was ridiculous, right? They were doing cloned Max. They were, it was just, it was a mess. And he had started Next, which was his, actually the kernel of uh, OS. OSX. And obviously things went to hell in a handbasket and they bring him back. And you think about this. Leadership matters, man. Vision matters. The why matters. But his his focus and his attention on building that business was certainly not about philanthropy. You are 100% correct. Uh, Richard at least donated to the Sun Foundation. Yeah, Richard has vision. And you know what to say Richard donated to the Sun Foundation? I don't know how much Richard actually donated to the Sun Foundation. You donated to the Sense Foundation. He facilitated it. I've been in fundraising for a long time. I've raised a lot of money. But did I give the money? No. Did Richard give a lot of his time and effort and energy? Yeah, he certainly did. But to say he raised $27 million, like he gave it, he didn't give it. He raised it. Yeah, he bundled it up with a bunch of hexagons from the community. And it's brilliant. But the vision about the future of longevity or about science and research and you know making you more healthy that's big. That's the stuff that we're in it for, right? 
I mean, number go up is great, but the vision that he's got for a vertically aligned ecosystem and then longevity and health and all that kind of stuff, it's worth following, right? People need to hear that. I think that's what they're going to hear in this highest stakes film. I think they're going to hear that story. I think they're going to see the heart in Richard Hart. Digital countries, it's beautiful. Plutonium, how you about? Crypto four, yes, the win. You're on fire. Thanks, Tank Crypto. I appreciate that, dude. Matt is amazing at running with the comments and turning them into alpha insight. Thanks so much for that. I appreciate that. I'm just trying my best. You know, you get into this position and, you know, it's like there's so much that's backwards, right? I feel like so many things are upside down. And I'm just thankful that I had, um, that I got common sense. And what's so funny is common sense these days seems like alpha. It's not alpha. It's common sense. It's basic things that resonate with people. But we constantly got to be reminded because this world is literally trying to draw us off sides, right? People want you to feel guilty for having common sense. Guilty, right? They want you to feel guilty for thinking, well, you know, hold on a second. Um, like this whole male and female thing, right? They want you to feel guilty. Like you, and to be cautious and, you know, and that's the whole point is for you to be off sides, you to be off center, you, do you not to have confidence, you to be fearful, right? Fear is this, this whole driver of all of this stuff. And what I'm reminding you of is, you know what, there's a point in which this, this thing snaps, right? You're just like, no, 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 no. And I think there's so many people in this world. And now that we've got a tool like the blockchain to see, you know what, we don't need to go along with this anymore. No. You've gone too far. And you know, you think about you know revolution in the past. What have people done? I look at the I look at the uh declaration of independence, which you know King George tore up, right? We consider this amazing founding document. And when it made it over there, he's like, Psh, right, this is a bunch of garbage, right? It means so much to us. Why? Well, one of the things that you see in this, if you look back to the church and the Reformation, the 95 reasons that were pinned, that were hammered on the Wittenberg church wall. What was it? These are the reasons that were upset. 95 theses, right? This was the whole reformation of the church is saying, hey, no, 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 no. We read this Bible and it doesn't say what you're saying it is. You don't need to pay for favors from God, right? There's a whole list of them, right? Well, then look at all of these other documents like the Declaration of Independence. If you read it, it tells you all the reasons that it's we're we're unhappy and that we think it's better that we separate. Well, what happens in a courtroom in a divorce proceeding? Hey, here are the reasons that this isn't working out. You look at Texas when they left, uh, basically got their independence from Mexico. Same thing. Looks very, very similar. People given the reasons. Well, you know what? There's a point in which you need to declare your own independence, right? Your own personal independence to say no. And that's how you lead your family. And that's how you lead your friends and being a part of a community of people who say no. And I think what's really neat about this idea of leaving people alone, and it's kind of fundamentally in kind of a libertarian idea is that, you know what, if you want to be stupid, be stupid, right? You want to do drugs, do drugs. You want to jump out of airplanes, jump out of airplanes. You want to drive too fast in a motorcycle, knock yourself out, right? Right. This idea of, hey, Leave me alone. I'll leave you alone. Let's work together, right? But at the end of the day, you make your decisions, right? I'll make my decisions. And if they don't harm each other, like, knock yourself out. That's the beauty of freedom, right? But all these social engineers across the world, they think they can twist the knobs. You know why? Here's the fundamental reason why. They believe the human heart is good. They believe that utopia is one tick of the dial away. And if we just get it right, and that's what naive, stupid people think. They think that, well, everybody's just good. And because everyone's good, then we can get this new system and this new process and this new thing. And they think they're smart. They're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's, it's the wrong foundational principle. It's, this, it's built on the fact that they think that the human heart is good. It's not good. Are people capable of good? Absolutely 100%. And they do it all the time. But the human heart is corrupt. And that's what the founders understood, right? And that's what a lot of people that have some sense understand. They're like... If you knew what I think about, you know how depraved I am. You know how uh, evil this is, right? Corrupt. And you give people value, make them king, you know, maybe they'll be benevolent. 
but the next guy ain't going to be, right? Because at the core, if you realize that we're destructive to ourselves and others when we have power, that decentralization is the antidote to authoritarianism. Decentralization is the antidote to authoritarianism. That's why this vertically aligned ecosystem of the Richard Hart world is brilliant because he gets it, gets it better than most people. And if you catch that vision, just like Simon Sinek, people don't buy what you make, they buy why you make it. Why is Richard making this thing? Because it sets the captives free. Throughout history, the stories of revolution is about those who have been oppressed becoming free. Freedom. Because why? Freedom is inherently given to you by the creator. No one, no man gives you freedom. Freedom is truly something that's ingrained in you, I believe, because you were created for a purpose. And so what do we do? We institute governments. We institute rules that hopefully are going to make a civilized society and opportunities and fairness that creates an opportunity. You want to make certain choices. Like, you know, for example, if you want to go to the gym and build your muscles, you can do it, right? Effort over time. If you want to build a business and create value, you can. If you want to sit on your couch all day, eat brownies and smoke weed out of a bong, you can at all day. You can do it all day until the money runs out or you can have somebody else pay for you. Those are the choices that we make. But how do we create a system in which not one person controls everything? And that's what the global bond villain everybody wants. And that's honestly, I hate to say this, but that's what you and I would do if we had all the power. We corrupt. We're like, no, I want to make it. It's my way, not your way. And it's so hard to think about this. The whole premise is to give away what you want to receive. And that's what we're seeing in the blockchain. It's just you and the contract, right? You own your keys, it's your coins. It's one contract, no middlemen. You engage with it and it might transform your, your life. And what do you do? You get into community with other people and go, hey, are we winning together? And you're like, yeah, we're winning together. Wow, this is exciting. Hey, let's be friends. And then we get more people under our friend group and they go, wow, could this be a vehicle for me? Could this set me free? Could this be something that transforms my life and creates opportunity for my family? Yeah. Do you mean we don't have to just do this? No, we can agree. Is that incredible or what? That we live in this time where literally we're creating value from our agreement and community? John Nash won the Nobel Prize in 1994 for his contribution to game theory in the area of economics. It was called the Nash Equilibrium. And the premise of it is what the movie A Beautiful Mind was made out of. And that's where literally... This inspiration that he had was that, hold on, if we all consider what's better for each other, in addition to ourselves, we all win. But if I don't consider what's important to you, I may win, but you will definitely lose. That's the whole premise of the blockchain and decentralization. DeFi exists on that principle. And that's what we see, people taking ownership of something. So think back at this. Richard creates Hex. What does RG3 do? What does is, what is, uh, Hexo do? The Hexologist. What does Coffee do? What do these guys do? They're, they see this thing and they go, oh, I'm an owner. I've got a bag. Wow, how can I pump my bag? Hey, there's this thing called DLive. There's this thing called YouTube. Wow, we could, like, we could tell this story. We could talk about this thing. We could make friends. And you know what's funny? I watched Hexo almost every single night. <laughs> Every single day at the end of the day. And he didn't talk about this stuff. He was just a good dude. And I was like, I can relate to this guy. And why are so many salt-of-the-earth people, a lot of blue-collar people, why do people, some people are in it for the tech. Some people are in it for the contract. Some people see it as a as a financial instrument. But also there's a bunch of veterans and there's a bunch of people who have seen hard times and they go, I, captain, right? A pirate, right? We're the bad news bears. The land of misfit toys. We're the mighty ducks. We're the bad news bears. This is what makes this thing special. And I'm glad there was gatekeeping because you know what? I don't want to be with a bunch of guys from the Hamptons whose daddy is a hedge fund guy. You know what I say to that? F that. Regular people standing up. My dad worked for $7 an hour in a factory in Detroit. My mom didn't have a job. 
My dad then got into HVAC work and my mother had schizophrenia. Sound familiar? It's exactly what Richard Hart's story is. And that's why I'm just drawn to it. I'm like, when you know what it's like to be up in an attic and hit your head on those nails that are sticking through and somebody kicked the light out of the wall and you're like, it's hot and I'm breathing in and itching from all this fiberglass. Knowing what hard times look like. That's why we've got so many people in this community that are like, man, is this our shot? Well, guess what? You know what the shot is? The shot isn't the contract. The shot is the community. How are you contributing to it? How are you a part of it? How are you adding to it? Every time we add a new person, every time we add a new caring person like David Lee that goes to a funeral, every time we go to a meetup, we're adding value to the system. And it's not just about cash. It's not just about cash. Because the people that have the cash out there are recognizing this and they're going, hold on. Wow, there is more to this than meets the eye. It's not just a, an investment. People want to belong. They want to fit in. There's way more value than money in this whole darn thing. All right. I just went on a rant. We went over an hour. Thank you for joining the Pulse today. My name is Matt. This is Crypto Heartbeat. Let's say hi to the rest of you in the chat, and then we'll say farewell. The Skilling family, hey, Matt, late getting uh, from work and have unfortunately missed some of today's stream, but we'll watch again tonight. Can't wait to have more time and the freedom thanks to the opportunity we have. Isn't that the truth, right? Buying back your time. Uh, Hexonium just dropped in. What's up, mate? After the movie heist, the stakes, uh, the world will wake up, don't you think? I totally agree. And then you're going to see this next big monumental bull run that's going to have a massive magnitude because the world's going to have changed. And we're going to see massive run ups because of Hart's Law. It's going to be paired. And then pow, pow, all this stuff is going to go. And then you're going to find yourself in abundance and you're going to have a responsibility. Please don't lord it over people to create gates and just repeat what the past has done. Control. No. Set the captives free, folks. Rip City Hacks. Crypto Heartbeat. Own the Fuego. En Fuego. Our true nature is good. The projected ego based on the community keeps us corrupt part. Um, hmm. I disagree with it. I, I believe that it's corrupt. There are good things in, but the human heart itself, I mean, you may be a nice person, but um, yeah, if, if I put all of your thoughts and everything that goes on display, no, you know, and there are things, right, that help keep you moored, right? Morality, there are things that keep you connected to something of substance, but I, I reject, um, completely this idea that we are pure or pure hearted there's goodness in people absolutely and they can be led to those things but at the end of the day you give people corruption you know you give people power and it corrupts absolutely i i would not i would not make that bet i wouldn't make the bet hey let's just give a bunch of money to this guy see how he treats us right that's 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 created like death and destruction across the world time and time and time again man it's so good when that fire comes <laughs> <laughs> Z money, thank you. I appreciate it. Hexonium, what's up? Howdy, Matt. Thanks for streaming. Thanks for being here. Heart in the right place. That's right. Richard Hart in the right place at the right time. You are in the right place at the right time. Tank crypto just wow. Always since we've been between the eyes. <laughs> hello, hello, Miss TV. Hexonium, the seekers of heaven will not find it. The seekers of God will. Wow. Yeah, that's a really good point. Yeah. Don't worship the creation, worship the creator. You guys, thanks for joining. Have a great rest of your day. It's Thursday, June 16th, and we've gone over time. Thanks for joining The Pulse. My name is Matt, and this is Crypto Heartbeat. Take care of yourself and others, and we'll dig you on the